Hello everyone and welcome to TTG Florida Fest's LGBT plus masterclass and q and I'm joined today by Dan Rios, Director for LGBTQ plus marketing at the Greater Miami Convention and Visitors Bar. So thank you, Dan, for joining me today. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So during this first section of TG Florida Fest Masterclass, we're going to discover Miami's LGBT friendly events, accommodation, destinations, experiences, as well as share tips for marketing to the LGBT plus community. We're then going to move on to hear what Visit St. Pete and Clearwater has to offer the LGBT plus community before welcoming your questions in a Q&A. So Dan, coming to you for the first questions, can you tell us a little bit about Miami's tourism offering and its top experiences that agents might like to highlight to their clients more generally? Absolutely, happy to. One of the great things that I find about the destination and Miami in general is that it has a very uh, diverse range of activities. So while you may think, or for the most part, people think that they can come here for the beach and sunshine, without a doubt, you can do that. But there's also the cosmopolitan aspect of this destination where you can uh, enjoy fantastic dining, art and culture. So much more of a sophisticated experience along with the beach experience. So that's really what separates us from a lot of other, you know, beach destinations that we can offer that uh, that range of, of experiences for our, our guests. Okay, great. Now we are here to talk about Miami for LGBT plus travelers, um, but which type of client is going to make the most of the city? Is in what what type of interests are they going to have? They're going to be interested in culture, food, adventure, what what um, nightlife? What what's the kind of things that um, agents should be looking for when talking to their clients? Uh, without a doubt, culture. I think that we are a destination where a lot of cultures have come together. And because of that, you're able to experience a lot of different aspects so like uh, the Haitian community, the uh, Cuban community, all of Latin America has, you know, representation and has molded our destination. So someone that is really interested in, in heritage and culture. Uh, we also have a fantastic uh, contemporary art scene, fantastic museums. We have our Basel that comes in December. So there's a lot of activity around that. So a more sophisticated customer that really appreciates that experience, but yet wants to be close to our beautiful waters, you know, so they can enjoy during the day before they actually head out or in the mornings before they head out. Actually, my favorite time to go to the beach, which is around five o'clock uh, when everyone starts to go, you know, that's really um, a nice time to enjoy the beaches. Um, and still be able to enjoy everything else that the destination has to offer. Okay, fantastic. Now, I know there must be tons of events and festivals that take place in Miami throughout the year, um, but which ones would you recommend um, agents suggest um, LGBT couples visit or visit for? <laughs> Well, there are a lot. I mean, we have 14 annual LGBTQ plus events alone. Uh, and we are really known, Miami is known for a destination that hosts big events. And what's great about it is that some of the big events that are general market, of course, appeal to the LGBTQ plus community. Uh, one of the ones that comes to mind is the South Beach Wine and Food Festival. Uh, it takes place in uh, February, March, sometimes around that perfect time of year to visit us. So it really highlights our cul culinary offer friends uh along with the boat show that takes place around the same time. Uh, moving a little further into the year, you know, we do have an increase of visitors uh, in the summer months, especially from Europe, and which is a great time to come. And we do have, you know, some great dance festivals like Sizzle on Miami Beach, as well as Sweet Heat. Uh, so that would be a nice way to enjoy a pool party and, and really uh, get a feel of what Miami, you know, that Miami heat is all about. But going further in uh, to or the end of the year, of course, our Basel is a big, big event for us. And not just the actual event that happens at the convention center, but there are satellite fairs that are that sprout out all over the city, including our LGBTQ one, which is called Art Gazel, uh, happens at Hotel Gathering. Um, on, on, in Miami Beach, but that really is a nice time to really highlight the destination and that sophisticated aspect that I was mentioning before. Uh, a lot of uh, pop-up events, you know, at hotels even, they exhibit artwork everywhere. So I would really recommend that time of year to explore. Okay, fantastic. Sounds like lots of fun. And when it comes to neighborhoods in Miami, um, 
that might be particularly well geared up to welcome LGBT plus couples. Are there any that you would highlight um, specifically for agents to recommend to their customers? Absolutely. Without a doubt, South Beach would be the place, uh, the first, you know, place to, to keep in mind. That is the core of our LGBTQ plus community. The visitor center is there. We have two hotels that are for the community there. Uh, and in general, that uh, neighborhood has been uh, speaking, you know, in the narrative of LGBTQ for three decades now. So we're very, very well versed with that customer. Uh, and that does, you know, is very, it's on the beach. So it's really, off, you know, offers that tropical feel. Now, of course, downtown has, uh, grown around us in the last you know two decades and some great properties to enjoy and really a more cosmopol cosmopolitan, um, feel to the destination. So downtown would be another uh, place that I would keep in mind. Wynwood is the art district and, you know, murals all over and they're having, uh, it's not a, uh, it's just recently becoming a tourist destination in the sense that we're just opening hotels there, but uh, but it's definitely a place to go and very artsy, very you know bohemian in a sense. And the last one that I would mention is Coconut Grove. Coconut Grove was South Beach before South Beach was South Beach. <laughs> it was really the cool place to come in and hang out, and it has seen a reemergence in the last uh, five to you know ten years with incredible, incredible hotels that are very sophisticated, very upscale, very you know catering to to uh, customers' needs. So that would be another neighborhood that I would highlight. Okay, fantastic. We do now have a short video to play that is going to highlight all the best bits of South Beach, like Dan just mentioned. So let's take a look. So now I know that agents should be cautious when choosing accommodation for LGBT plus couples and um, they need to ensure both staff members and guests will be welcoming and understanding of their needs. Um, are you able to recommend any hotels or resorts that, that guarantee these couples a comfortable and, and a safe stay? Absolutely. I think that for, for starters, the two hotels that are in South Beach that are owned by and operated by the community. Hotel Gathering, it's a small boutique hotel away from all the craziness. It's on the west side of the island, so nice and quiet. You get to enjoy really uh, a neighborhood feel. I live two blocks away and it's actually my neighborhood hangout. Uh, so it's really a nice way to get to know the local community as well. Now, a little bit closer to the beach, uh, Axel Beach Miami, which is part of Axel Hotels, is a brand that has been catering to the LGBT plus community for many, many years. Uh, we're very fortunate to have them here. 
But from that, you know, these are, uh, there's also other hotels that have made a commitment to welcome our community. Some that come to mind are Satai, uh, a very beautiful upscale property, the Confidant Miami Beach, Eden Rock is another great property. Now these are much bigger on the beach, more of a resort feel. And then coming to the mainland, Epic is a great selection and very great friend of the community. And going back to Coconut Grove, like I mentioned, Mr. C just opened there and it's a beautiful, beautiful property with exceptional dining and beautiful views. So I would also recommend that. Amazing, thank you. Now, I know you said Miami has it's got this sophisticated vibe. Are either of those, any, any of those hotels and resorts that you've mentioned suitable for a, a particularly luxury client? Yes, I think that uh, Satai is up there. In mm -hmm. fact, I believe, you know, I'm, it's one of our five star properties. Mr. C, fantastic, uh, you know, luxurious. They cater to your every need. Fantastic dining options. So those two stand uh, stand out, I would think. But Epic as well, uh, wonderful property. So the LGBTQ plus owned properties are much more relaxed, much more, uh, you know, uh, hang out and relax and get to know your community. Uh, but for nevertheless, you know, if you do select those, there's a lot of uh, upscale dining and, uh, you know, other appeal around that too. So, okay, brilliant. And you know, seeing as you work for marketing for Miami, and what are your tips for marketing to LGBT plus couples? Are there any do's and don'ts that agents should be aware of? I would encourage the agents to explore everything else that we have to offer. Like, for instance, you know, we are the only county in the United States that has two national parks, Everglades National Park and Biscayne National Park. So you are able to stay and enjoy this very cosmopolitan feel that I was describing, but 45 minutes away, you are in the middle of alligator land in an airboat with uh, native, uh, you know, uh, you know, people from the community, the Mikasuki tribe, two-spirit people. So you're able to connect with our community as well. Uh, and it's a great experience. So I, I would recommend to agents to really explore the little known facts about our destination, which, you know, I'm happy to inform them of, uh, to really uh, provide their customers that unique experience. Okay, great. And one final question for you. Is, is there anything else that you think agents should know about selling Miami right now or this year? I think, in, you know, we are, we have a long history in Miami of uh, welcoming the community. You know, it happened rather organically in the 90s. Uh, and then, of course, as uh, LGBTQ plus tourism became uh, more uh recognized, you know, we have a lot of competition. So we started to uh, um, speak and attract the community in a more formal approach and a marketing plan. Uh, but one of the things that we do and we were very proud of is we offer training to our um, hospitality industry. We want them not only to just say, yeah, sure, we want LGBT plus community to come and be our customers, but we want them to be prepared to welcome them. So we offer this Miami Begins With Me LGBTQ plus diversity and inclusion training that really uh, empowers the hospitality industry with uh, personalized ways to engage the community. Uh, and I'm very proud of that. I think uh, that really um, gives our industry an, a deeper understanding about our community and it makes us uh, stand out in welcoming them. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Dan, for sharing your intel. <laughs> so thank you. I appreciate Great. being here. Absolutely. So viewers, if you have any questions for Dan about selling Miami to LGBT plus customers or, or more generally, um, please do type them in the chat box ready for the Q&A. He's going to be joining representative from Visit St. Pete in Clearwater to answer your questions in just over 10 minutes time. But first, let's move on to Visit St. Pete in Clearwater and hear what that destination has to offer the LGBT plus community. Welcome to Daryl Vogus, who is the Leisure Travel Sales Manager for Visit St. Pete Clearwater. So thank you for joining, Daryl. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Fantastic. As with Miami, we're going to be covering LGBT plus friendly accommodation and the best neighborhoods to visit. But we'll also be covering details of, de of the destination's pride celebrations, best beaches and top activities in St. Pete Clearwater. Great. So, so Daryl, tell us a little bit about St. Pete Clearwater's LGBT plus community and what visitors can expect from the locals there. Well, we have a huge LGBTQ plus community here in St. Pete Clearwater. Um, actually, um, we were given a human rights um, campaign um, equality uh, rating 
-hmm. which is one of the best that you can get in the U.S. Um, for the community. We also have a community liaison in St. Pete for the LGBT plus Q community. We also have a welcome center. We have a metro health clinic. So we're very involved in um, the LGBTQ plus uh, community here in St. Pete. I mean, we have multiple different neighborhoods that are really uh, friendly toward um, this community and um, yeah. Okay. And as I said before, I know that accommodation choice is very important for LGBT plus couples. Um, are you able to pick out some hotels and resorts that are going to guarantee these clients a welcoming environment when they visit St. Pete Clearwater? Well, all of our beach properties are great. I mean, you, the LGBTQ plus is very uh, welcome to all the beach communities between Clearwater to Madeira to Treasure Island to St. Pete Beach. There's no um, issues there. We are actually building a new gay only uh, property called the Marie Jean that will be exclusively for the LGBTQ plus community. Um, and it's attached with a bar and a pool area. So that's exciting. And that's in downtown St. Pete. Oh, very exciting. Okay. Now I hear St. Pete Water hosts pride celebrations um, every year. Well, when do they take place and what's typically on the agenda? What, what can we expect from the celebrations? So usually our pride celebration is at the either the last weekend of the month, but it's really the whole month of June. So it's everything from drag brunch to um, extra activities at the beach to sporting events, hosting LGBTQ plus um, activities. But it's in downtown St. Petersburg. It's the largest in the state of Florida and only second to Atlanta for the whole Southeast city of the United States. So it's a really, really fun celebration. Um, and it's an amazing time for um, families, for um, the LGBT plus, like whatever part of um, the community you're in, it's open and accepting. So it's a lot of fun. Okay. And you mentioned um, all neighborhoods are LGBT plus friendly, but are there any that are particularly geared up to welcome LGBT plus um, community members? Are you able to highlight any hangouts or fa favorite hotspots that you can give us an overview of today? Well, I would say that downtown St. Petersburg on the Bay, only, you know, 10 minutes from St. Pete Beach, um, is probably like the hot spot. That's where all of our bars and restaurants and clubs are. However, we also have Gulfport, which is just south of St. Pete Beach, which is more of a lesbian kind of hangout with a lot of like great little venues there. And then we also have Dunedin, which is by Clearwater, which also has their own pride parade and they have venues, um, bars and venues there for the LGBTQ plus community. So really, I mean, it's spread throughout the whole entire um, destination, but I would have to say downtown St. Pete is the hot spot. Okay. And uh, what about activities and um, visitors to, to St. Pete Clearwater? Um, are there any particular experiences that you'd really recommend um, within these LGBT plus friendly areas that you've just mentioned? Well, I mean, being down here in Florida, we have an activity for every single traveler. I mean, Beside, I mean, we have the sports with the Tampa Bay Rays and the Buccaneers and the Lightning um, hockey. We have the theme parks with Orlando being so close to us. We also have um, theme park in Tampa. Um, and then, of course, we have the beaches and also the venues for like live entertainment. So, I mean, really, I couldn't say that there's one thing specific because it's really open for everyone mm -hmm. overall. So, I mean... I would just say, come down. I mean, we're going to fit whatever that traveler LGBTQ plus is into. We're going to have something for them. Okay, fab. Um, and I've got a question here about beaches. Um, I would like to think all beaches are LGBTQ plus friendly. Um, but are there any that you would say are, would be particularly attractive to the community? Um, I think you mentioned downtown. Would that would that be like the one to go to? Well, we do have a downtown beach in St. Petersburg, right off of our new hundred million dollar pier which is um amazing little beach but really sunset beach which is just north of st pete beach um is the hot spot for um the lgbtq plus traveler this beach is dedicated uh gay beach so when they show up there's going to be flags flying there's going to be families there's going to be like the bears and like all the different kind of organizations within the LGBTQ plus um, will be at this beach. Sunday is the hot day on the beach. It's completely packed. But yes, we do have a dedicated um, gay beach. 
Okay, fantastic. Sounds brilliant. <laughs> Again, it's Sunset Beach, right just north of uh, St. Pete Beach. Lovely. Okay. So now we've heard all about St. Pete Clearwater, let's take a look at a video that's going to bring this destination to life. Awesome. Great. Okay, fantastic. Just before we wrap up, is there anything else agents should know about selling some peak Clearwater right now? Really, I mean, we're really open and accepting. It's easy to get here um, into Tampa International Airport. Um, luckily, we do have Tampa just across the bay, so we do have a, a extra added amenity with having them across there that has a lot of activities for the LGBTQ plus traveler on that side, just seven minutes across the bridge. So really we're a great destination. We're very uh, friendly, easygoing, and um, yeah, you'll have to check us out with 361 days of beautiful sunny weather. I mean, you can't go wrong. <laughs> you can't, you really can't, especially not for agents here in the UK. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. All right, fantastic. So viewers, if you have any questions for Daryl about selling St. Pete Clearwater to LGBT plus customers or about the destination more generally, please do type them in the chat box now as we're going to be moving on to the live Q&A. Thank you. OK, time for the live Q&A. Um, you might notice Dan looks a little different today. <laughs> we have Joe joining us. Um, and Dan was unable to join. So thanks for stepping in, Joe. Uh, hi, Maddie. How are you? Daryl, great to see you. Good to see you too, as always, Joe. Fabulous. Thank you. Okay, so we've had a couple of questions already. We've got just about 10 minutes to get through these. So any extras, please do pop them in the chat. Um, we've had a question about clubs and bars that, that you would recommend for visitors in both destinations. So, Joe, shall I come to you first? Well, for, for me, that, that might be a little bit uh, difficult for me to answer because okay. um, I, you know, filling in for Dan, um, you know, I, I, for myself, I, I, I am, I consider myself an ally of the uh, LGBTQ community as most of us are here in the destination and certainly here within our organization. So um, there are, I know that there are some great clubs, um, you know, on South Beach, uh, certainly, and even on the mainland um, uh, for the LGBTQ community and our visitors when they come to uh, Greater Miami, Miami Beach. 
Uh, it's just difficult for me to answer that right now. So I will jot that down and uh, make sure that uh, if at some point, if there's any way to uh, be able to um, supply that information or provide that information, I'll certainly um, ask Dan to uh, make that, uh, you know, send it to you. And if there's any way that we can upload it somewhere. Absolutely. Um, Daryl, if you're happy to pop your email address in the chat, um, Joe, you can pick up his email from there um, and send it on when ready. Sure. That'll be fab. Thank you. Um, Daryl, it's just coming to you now. Um, awesome. Do you know any great clubs and bars in St. Pete Clearwater that you'd like to recommend today? So we are um, actually growing um, our LGBTQ plus uh, bars. So we just added the wet spot, which is an outside pool bar. Um, and it's attached to Cocktail, one of our bigger like disco themed bars in downtown St. Pete. We also have um, Blur and Dunedin, which is in the north part of the county. Um, we have also Quench up in Clearwater and the Pro uh, Shop Pub in Clearwater. And then we have all of these great little neighborhood um, gay bars like Lucky Stars, Garage on Central, Salty Nun. Also our dog bar, which is like brings the dogs together with um, the LGBT. Q plus um, folks that are traveling, which is a lot of fun. We have, um, you know, Mixers and Lost and Found, which is a new bar that just opened up in the past two months that um, really highlights the disco era of the 70s and early 80s music. So all they do is play like great uh, music there. So it's a lot of fun. So yeah, we have a lot. Amazing. I've got another question for you, Joe. Um, does Miami host Pride celebrations? I'm going to hazard a guess and say yes. Um, but do you have any plans for the future? Yeah, I, actually, actually, we do, uh, and it's coming up shortly. We don't, we don't do our, we don't do ours in June. We don't celebrate in June, even though it is Pride Month, uh, because it's just way too hot down here. So uh, we would all melt. Um, those are, you know, our our visitors as well as us that participate at, you know, um, in the uh, in the Pride Parade. But uh, it does um, happen. And that will take place um, primarily um, J April 1st through the 16th. So that's uh, that's coming. And that's actually uh, one of the many events uh, that will be taking place or that does take place during the brand new uh, program that we do have here in Miami, Greater Miami, Miami Beach, uh, Rainbow Spring, uh, which will start. It actually uh, will start the 1st of March. And uh, leading up all the way through June uh, for Pride Month. So, um, yes, uh, our Pride Parade and Pride events uh, will take place right at the beginning of, of uh, April. Amazing. And you met, so Rainbow Spring is a brand new initiative, which is fantastic to hear. Yes. Um, I hear it's kicking off with the Winter Party Festival, I saw yep. online. Correct. Um, what, what does that entail? What does that look like? Well, you know, it's 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 really a uh, it's an event it, that's going to take place uh, March uh, the first through the seventh, mm -hmm. and it's really an opportunity to say goodbye to the winter, if you will. Not that we have a real winter down here in in Florida, but uh, and then uh, look forward to uh, to spring and all the new things that uh, you know, obviously, uh, the spring and the summer uh, do bring to our destination. So um, again, we have that to to kick off. Um, actually, Rainbow Spring, um, the Pride. Um, Miami Beach Pride, which is what I mentioned uh, as well. Um, and there's some uh, numerous other events. And, and I have to tell you that uh, Dan has been instrumental in working with the city of Miami Beach because most of the events will take place uh, on Miami Beach. But he's been actually instrumental and has worked diligently and very hard uh, to make this initial uh, Rainbow Spring event uh, one to remember. So we're really looking forward to it um, uh, as a destination and certainly looking forward to welcoming our friends from uh, you know, all over the world to come and, and enjoy the festivities. Fantastic. Okay. And Kerry, we have a question from Kerry. Uh, so I'll come to you first for this one, Daryl. Um, she has a client who loves the chic and boutique feel with, with relaxation vibes, um, but isn't too quiet. Uh, which hotel would you recommend for, for that particular client, would you say? Um, I would say... In downtown St. Pete, we have a great hotel. It's called the Hollander Hotel. It's um, um, a great little property that really does a lot of full-side activities. Um, also, um, if she wants very chic downtown St. Pete is um, the Vinoy property, which is um, a luxury property, but it has a lot of historic charm and is uh, very open to the gay community. Out at the beach, 
Really, the Don Cesar at St. Pete Beach is amazing. But also, if she wants fun and quirky and, and a little funky, but like, you know, has a great appeal, is the Postcard Inn at St. Pete Beach. Um, all of the properties in the Clearwater area are usually your um, larger uh, big box um, flag properties, such as, you know, Hyatt Hilton, Wyndham, um, all accepting, but um, just a little bit of different vibe. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And what, Joe, what about in Miami? Well, most of our boutique hotels are right in the uh, design district. Um, they're, um, it's hard to say if, the, if there's any quiet ones on there, but uh, the Betsy comes to mind, which is right at the end of uh, Ocean Drive. Um, and uh, um, I it, that yeah, that's, a, that's a beautiful property. It's a great property. Um, tends to be a little bit more quiet towards that, uh, that side of, um, you know, of uh, Ocean Drive. Um, right on the beach. Um, but, you know, Dan mentioned, uh, you know, both the gathering as well as the actual, which are, are the two, um, you know, LGBTQ owned and operated uh, hotels, specifically uh, hotels. But uh, there's a large array of hotels in the South Beach area. But as you, you know, the thing with us here is that you, as you start getting going a little bit north, it starts to get a little bit more quiet. So Mid Beach actually has uh, some great areas. They're not necessarily boutique hotels. Uh, but Dan mentioned the Confidant, which happens to be one of the ones in the in the Mid Beach area, as well as the the Eden Rock. Those are a little bit larger, but uh, I would say uh, boutique wise, uh, the Betsy is a incredible property um, right on on Ocean Drive. Amazing, thank you. Uh, and then just a question more generally um, about your destinations is what's the recommended length of stay for a UK visitor, um, Daryl in, in St Pete Clearwater? Well, on average, our length of stay for a UK visitor is um, a week, which um, is great because there's always something to do um, over here. I mean, really, I would say like three to four days is too short, um, but anything around the week, seven day mark would be great because you're really going to get a lot in. Mm -hmm. Great. And, and Joe, you're nodding. Is that about the same for Miami? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree yeah. because there's a lot, uh, a lot to discover, uh, I think, in the destination. So uh, that leaves you time for uh, to, to go and visit our two national parks that border our destination, as well as our, you know, unbelievable uh, neighborhoods. Yes. Great. And I know that Twin Center or Multi Center um, holidays are popular with UK visitors when they travel to Florida because um, it's quite a long flight. Um, what destinations would you guys typically be paired with? Um, Daryl, St. Pete, Clearwater? So typically we're paired with um, Orlando because we're only about mm -hmm. an hour and a half drive away. Um, so a lot of times um, the travelers will go into the parks um, for the first couple of days and then they come over to the beach to relax and kind of regroup and after like doing the whole theme park thing. Um, also, Tampa is right across the bay, and then we have nonstop flights from the UK into Tampa International. So a lot of times, uh, folks will do a little bit over on the Tampa side and then cross the bridge and come over to the beaches on our side. Okay, great. And what about Miami, Joe? Yeah, I think I'd have to say Orlando was probably mm -hmm. uh, the main one that we are uh, paired with. However, uh, the Keys, the Florida Keys, especially Key West is another one uh, that uh, a lot of our visitors tend to go uh, down into, uh, into Key West. But again, I mean, even the West Coast, uh, right where Daryl is at, um, you know, whether it's uh, uh, Naples, Fort Myers, um, there's a lot of combination of, of visiting Miami with the, the West Coast as well. So um, I think, you know, we are pretty centrally located. So uh, from Miami, you can kind of go in different directions, but or definitely Orlando, I think, is the primary uh, destination that we're paired with. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, if anyone else has any more questions, please do put them in. Is there anything else that Daryl or Joe you'd like to flag before we wrap up the Q&A? Um, I would just say, yeah, come down. Florida is great. Yeah. Um, our beaches are lovely. Um, the arts, uh, the different attractions that we have um, for the UK visitors. I mean, really, you're in the sun. So um, if you pair that with great dining options or great art, or um, just family activities, it's a good time to come down to um, Florida to enjoy. enjoy. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna echo, I'm gonna echo what uh, my good friend Daryl is saying. Um, you know, there's really a lot to discover down here. Um, again, with the neighborhoods, the different neighborhoods that offer you a different experience, a cultural experience, a, a culinary experience, and just activities that you're going to 
of find, and then just the natural side of, of the destination. And I think that, you know, St. Pete, as well as, um, you know, as well as here in, in Miami, uh, we do have a lot of great um, uh, natural um, areas for you to enjoy for those, those uh, you know, those vis- visitors that kind of want to want to get out of the city a little bit and just enjoy the natural side mm-hmm. of the destination. Amazing. Thank you both for joining today and for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to welcoming you all home uh, back to Miami. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. And Bye. we will now take a short break, a uh, 15 minute break, and we will meet you back here at 3.25 for the Luxury Masterclass. So we'll see you then. Thank you.